PTG Holroyd Precision is a world leader in the design, build, and supply of high-precision gear, rotor, screw, and thread milling and grinding machines. They manufacture ultra-precise helical components. Here are some of their key machine tools. 1. PTG Holroyd EX Series Rotor Milling Machines. These machines are used for rotor milling. 2. Zenith 400 Helical Profile Grinding Machine. This machine is used for helical profile grinding. 3. TG Series Helical Rotor and Thread Grinding Machines. These machines are used for helical rotor and thread grinding. 4. GT Series Gear Grinding Centers. These centers are used for gear grinding. 5. SP Series Screw Pump Spindle Grinding Machines. These machines are used for screw pump spindle grinding. 6. WG Series Worm Grinding Machines. These machines are used for worm grinding. 7. Ancillary Support Machines. These machines provide additional support. They use PTG Holroyd machine tools to manufacture ultra-precise helical components. This includes both batch and volume production. Following profile milling, precision cylindrical grinding of shaft diameters is done. Depending on the components, rotor profiles are then finished ground on Holroyd's TG and Zenith Ultra Precision CNC helical grinding machines. This process can produce new types of screw profiles in a matter of hours, dramatically reducing customer development and process lead times. PTG Holroyd serves a diverse range of industries. From aerospace and automotive to FAC, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, air compression, marine, medical, oil, gas, and power generation. They offer sector-leading technical knowledge, manufacturing capability, and customer support. They have also developed sophisticated, intuitive software to help their customers work effectively and efficiently. And effic GMW's EV Traction Motor Stator Winding Production Line is designed to handle a variety of stator sizes and shapes. It focuses on automation and minimizing human intervention to ensure consistent quality and high production efficiency. The production line employs a series of interconnected machines and equipment to handle various stages of stator production. Includes several key components. 1. Material handling systems to automatically move and position materials like stator laminations, copper wire, and other components. 2. Coil winding machines to precisely wind the copper wire around the stator core, creating the electromagnets. This might involve different equipment like vertical winding machines or dual flyer coil winders depending on the specific stator design. 3. Automated insertion and forming machines to accurately insert and shape the wound coils into the stator slots, and form the connections between phases. For quality control stations to inspect the stators for dimensions, electrical characteristics, and potential defects using vision systems or other sensors. 5. Curing ovens to properly cure any adhesives or coatings used in the stator assembly process. 6. Testing stations to perform final functional tests on the completed stators before packaging and shipment. This production line has significantly increased productivity. For instance, with the same specifications, their skilled manual coil insertion technicians previously took 8 hours to complete the production of one stator. However, with this production line, they achieve a remarkable production speed of one stator every 360 seconds resulting in an average productivity increase of over four times. Elbow ducts are typically manufactured in specialized facilities with proper equipment and trained personnel. There are two main types of elbow ducts. The first one is sheet metal elbows. These are made from sheet metal, often galvanized steel, and are formed using precise techniques like bending, folding, and seaming. This process requires specialized machinery and expertise to ensure proper airflow and structural integrity. The second one is flexible duct elbows. 
These are made from flexible materials like foil or fabric and are typically used for low-pressure applications. While they may seem easier to make, their proper installation and use still require following specific guidelines and regulations. Making an elbow duct involves several steps with a simplified process. The first thing you should do is determining the size and angle of the elbow duct you want to fabricate. This will depend on the specific requirements of your FAC system. Once you have the layout, you can start fabricating the duct elbow. This involves bending the metal at the marked sections until all marked sections have been bent to the desired angle. After all the pieces are fabricated, they are assembled to form the elbow duct. Univision Automation specializes in manufacturing automatic assembly machines, including those used for bearing assembly. Individual bearing components are automatically fed from hoppers or vibratory feeders using specialized mechanisms. Vision systems or other sensors might be used to orient the components precisely for proper assembly. Components may undergo pre-assembly steps like lubrication or cleaning in preparation for final assembly. Depending on the bearing type, various automated mechanisms might be used to press or insert components together precisely, apply specific forces or torques and ensure proper alignment and clearances. Assembled bearings might undergo automated inspections using vision systems or other sensors to check dimensions, surface quality, and potential defects. Some processes may involve functional testing for characteristics like noise and vibration. Completed bearings are automatically packaged and labeled for further processing or shipment. They also have quality control automation systems in place to ensure the assembled bearings meet the required standards. The Leonard Moll by Volat and the Genbau is a system for mass-producing concrete sleepers, also known as railroad ties. Leonard Moll has been manufacturing pre-stressed concrete sleepers since 1937. Volat and the Genbau provide state-of-the-art mold circulation systems, which are now the worldwide standard for the manufacture of pre-stressed concrete sleepers. They cater to various projects e monoblock sleepers, bi-block sleepers, late demolding processes or immediate demolding processes, from low automation and upgradable startup processes through to the world's largest concrete sleeper plants. For instance, in a project for Inkel Insight, Volat and the Genbau developed a plant that produces 450. 000 pre-stressed concrete sleepers per year in a two-shift operation. The manufacturing process of concrete sleepers involves industrial pre-production and highly automated machine technology. Aggregates, cement, water, and any admixtures are prepared for measuring, batching, and mixing to create the concrete mix according to specific requirements. The concrete mix is poured into molds that shape the sleepers. These molds might be made of steel or other durable materials and may incorporate features for creating specific details like holes or grooves. The concrete is compacted to remove air bubbles and ensure strength. This might involve vibration or other techniques. The concrete is then allowed to set and cure under controlled conditions, such as in a curing chamber. Once cured, the concrete sleepers are removed from the molds, potentially cleaned or finished, and inspected for quality control. This might involve visual inspection, dimensional checks, and potentially strength testing. Concrete sleepers, often used in railway systems, have several advantages. Concrete sleepers are resistant to corrosion, sunlight, and water. They are made of a hard and dense material that is not affected by effects of moisture, atmospheric gases, and subsoil salts. The additional weight of concrete sleepers provide solid stability, making tracks more stable compared to wooden sleepers. They also won't change color in response to temperature fluctuations. Concrete sleepers provide excellent insulation as they are made of cement, sand, and other materials. In landscaping, Concrete sleeper retaining walls are often used to construct various levels and zones, reduce erosion, and stabilize the ground. 